and we are synced. Hello, everyone. We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show, episode three or four. Don't you nod at me in that tone of voice. I am your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff, reporting to you from, via satellite on location from a place that shall remain nameless. With us, as always, is starting off with the Scholars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, the one and only Scholar Brian. Scholar Brian, what's up tonight, sir? It's It's been a polarizing week, in my case, in the world of wrestling. Because while many people enjoyed Extreme Rules, I not so much. Hmm. But, okay, and and everything else was, it, it, this week has been kind of weird. It's been a hmm. little weird, it's been a little awkward, and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. But, of course, we cannot get through the rest, of, we can't proceed with the rest of the show without con- introducing the rest of our cast, including oh, these, but we won't, because we're nice like that. <laughs> <laughs> including the Scholars of Wrestling party champion, the one and only Scholar Tarek. Scholar Tarek, how are you doing tonight, sir? I am doing perfectly fine, good sir. I feel like you should have uh, opened this episode, considering where you are, with a We're really glad that you're our friend, and this is a friendship that'll never, ever end. How do you Unless know I won't add that in post? Then we... Unless you're Braun Strowman, because then we drown you. <laughs> That's it. I'll look it up. Maybe it's uh, open. Maybe it's like open source, open license, whatever you call that. Free, fair use, whatever. Oh. Hey, may, if it's open, maybe I'll add it in post. I don't know. And then you'll look really silly in, in retrospect. Woony Scholar Charlie. Woony? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, you. Also joining us today, as always, the one only Scholar Charlie. How's it going tonight, sir? Uh, uh, kind of wishing I didn't beg Brian not to defend the championship, but like most good times in my life, I shoot myself in the foot prior to them, so the best <laughs> is yet to come. And babe, won't it be fine? Absolutely. Well, you gotta get, we gotta give you this, Charlie. What up? At, at least you actually got one over the champion this is true considering now we like reading what the official result is of a certain swamp fight uh yeah i have to say congratulations to you as well since you and i tied that predictions and and that's all well and good us as well that that's all well and good take take your yeah i i thought i'm I'm, I'm right now just trying my best to ignore Brian because I know he's going to be talking some uh, okay. major shit right now. So we all we all won aside from the champion, right? It, no, it, no, uh, uh, well, it was you and I. It was uh, you and I that had the win with uh, Bray. Uh, Jeff picked Braun, and uh, Brian picked uh, the New Day. And and you know what? That's fine. Take your victory in stride. All that matters, still the champion. Because Charlie couldn't keep his mouth shut again. <laughs> but, but you're a strapless champion because you don't have the belt. So, oh, okay, Jeff. Okay. 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 Kids, kids, let them hey. fight. Let them fight. Let them fight. Oh. <laughs> a, a brand new battlefield is coming soon after, after what's going to be going down at SummerSlam in the near future. But it would not be we before we proceed any further and we get through ex, the results and the fallout from Extreme Rules. We got to kick things off right on this episode of the Scholars Wrestling Show with a little bit of backstage news. Indeed, we shall go ahead and peek behind that counter and check in on a little backstage news. 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 Ooh. Sammy Guevara. Uh. <laughs> uh. Or in Charlie's case, man. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yes, to uh, to bring the rest of our listeners and viewers up to speed, uh, there have been not only was there a recent return of Sammy Guevara on AEW, it was Dynamite recently announced or AEW Dynamite Kick. That's right. Oh. On it was recently announced this week that AEW oh. would be replacing WWE on Sky Sports Italy, much to the shock of, at the very least, myself, because I never expected something like this to ever come about. But there was also, I also understand that there's some thoughts about AEW as a whole floating around. Uh, Let's uh, start with you, Charlie, since you've been fairly outspoken on the Twitter machines this week. Take us through what do you think of this announcement? Does it imply anything new? And what are what are your reactions to what happened with Sammy Guevara and AEW on AEW programming as a whole? I've I've calmed down in my reaction because I've unfortunately gone on dirt sheets today and saw something that was more frustrating than this situation. But I'll get to that later. Hmm. Um I, plain and simple, plain and simple, plain and simple. I just think inside that, jokes that they let they let the man back a little too early. That's I, I I don't think that the punishment met the crime per se. Okay, Ryan, you... tear me a new one, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and and here's where I'm going to come in and tell you why I believe that you're wrong. It's here's the deal. Okay, everybody else who has been accused of something, been confirmed, or whatever, they haven't taken responsibility for their actions. They haven't, they've, in in the case of Joey Ryan, he puts out an hour-long YouTube video that actually makes it worse. (laughs) Okay, that's it. And, And all that. Here's the deal with Sammy Guevara. Okay. He made a very insensitive joke. In a locker room environment four years ago, where jokes like that were okay to be said, not that that's giving him an excuse for making it or anything like that, but, okay, he apologized two times publicly on Twitter He talked to Sasha Banks. She talked to him. Okay. He apologized directly to the person who he said it about. Okay. And it's not like he actually committed the act. Okay. The deal is this. He made a a really insensitive joke. And I'm going to bring it back to an incident what was it, probably like 2009, 2010. This is the same thing that happened when Chris Jericho kicked the Brazilian flag. Okay, Mm -hmm. he got a 30-day suspension, no pay, they bought him back. Okay, for a, in this case, for an insensitive joke that he has shown that he is very, he was very apologetic. He did everything he had to do. All that, I do think the punishment fits the crime. I do think a 30-day suspension with no pay is enough. Okay, if it was anything else, okay, haven't heard from Jimmy Havoc recently, have we? Okay, that's it. Haven't heard from, uh, as as I already said, Joey Ryan's never going to get work again. <laughs> that the, uh, the bunch of guys that that shit came up came out about in that particular time, never going to hear shit again. And the people who were really pissed off about Sammy Guevara coming back, let's face it, okay. I hate to say this because I love the competitor at the, and she's really the best thing. One of the best things going in the WWE right now, but the Sasha Banks fan base. Okay. Not talking about anybody in this recording 
or viewing it right now, they're the most toxic fucking fan base in the entire wrestling industry. <laughs> okay. All this came out because of little fun gags that were going on between Sammy Guevara, Chris Jericho, Sasha Banks, and Bailey during a little ratings dispute. Right. Is that that the they... I don't hate Sammy Guevara. I think he's oh, one of the I... most promising guys on the roster. I never thought I you just did. I thought it was a bit too soon. I I th- I think the thirty days I, I think the thirty day punishment for his particular act. Okay, a joke, a very insensitive joke that was said during a time where in order to get over in the locker room with the boys, you had to talk like that. <laughs> okay, that's it. And it came out and 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 it came out from a Sasha Banks fan going back and looking through his shit because of because of storyline tweets that were going on between Sasha Banks, Bailey, Jericho, and Guevara. Not saying that what he did was right, not saying that it wasn't really insensitive and should have never been said, but for me, the punishment fits the crime. 30 days non-suspension. I'm good here. <laughs> That's it. Fool, looks like you've got... Uh, do you have anything to add to this before we uh, move on to something else? I want... When it comes to the their, their un- dispute about Sammy Guevara or the story uh, about... Uh, what is it? Sky Italy? I, I don't know. You, I, couldn't, I couldn't really read your reaction. I couldn't tell if you had something to add to this or not. Oh, when it, comes to, when it comes to them discussing, I honestly don't give two shits. I'm Sammy Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Guevara's no, back. Say about okay. that. <laughs> Sammy Guevara's back. I'm perfectly fine with that. I like I like the kid. I I do I see both of your sides and yeah, he I think uh pretty much a month punishment is uh is good enough. Uh Hopefully the kid learned his lesson and not to do that dumb shit again. Uh, but when it comes to the TV deal, I'm just I'm just gonna say congrats to to everyone at AEW for getting for getting that. It's nice to see AEW oh. spread spread over basically the American borders. Now it's going to it's going everywhere else. I'm I'm happy for that. It's just, it's also a shame that it has to be at the cost of WWE because it's so expensive for them to play WWE shows. And that's, it just, oh, for me, when it comes to basically the business side of stuff like that, I I just got no one else to blame but Vince. Mm -hmm. Because Vince is just in the history of just shown, at least, especially this year, just shown that he's just basically one of those, like, dickhead businessmen that is just, his pro- and, he's making the product too expensive. That's why with AEW well, so cheaper, they're going with that one. And just and people are just seeing the cap- seeing what kind of a basically dickhead businessman that he is. And it just ends to that where I have to ask, like, do you really want to work with that guy? And I just and it just keeps adding to my whole thing that now at this point, when it comes to the WWE, I I feel like when it comes to it, uh, the fans and their hatred of WWE. I just think it just stems on just how Vince is running the product and how he's basically sc- screwing up all these people with the X with the XFL and all the the firings in April just so that he can make more money. That money that he's not at a situation where he's losing. It's just once again, it's just adding more bad image to the product, and I think that's what stems on most of the fans' hatred towards it, because I feel like both products, AEW and WWE, are, are putting on very good products. Of course, there's obviously nitpicks. Of course, we're human beings. We Nothing's perfect. So I just want to keep... I wish like WWE would still keep their shows on those on those networks overseas, just so we get it could be in our position where 
it's not just a, a war like what most of the internet wrestling community is going on. Like a, I don't look at it as a war. It's just look at more wrestling. And now with WWE losing their TV deal, it's them. It's Italy losing wrestling. So, and and here's that's all I really what, got to say about that. Yeah, and here's the and here's also the deal with that kind of thing. You also have to look at it this way. Okay, Italy had WWE for what 20, 25 years on mm-hmm. on that station. Here's the mm-hmm. deal. Okay. AEW is fresh. It's new. It's doing things that people haven't seen in years. Okay, and and when you th- and when you think about it that way, okay, and when you see the splits, and and yes, I'm gonna go into it. Okay, oh. if we're talking about the demo god over here and and all this stuff. Okay, AEW is the thing for that viewing audience right now. The, the, the viewers of the age range that, that uh, advertisers want to see, okay, are, are, are flocking to AEW right now. And that's okay. perfectly fine. I'm not saying that they so, shouldn't. I'm just saying, it's just... It's just why can't we all? Why can't we just have more wrestling about it? They don't, and it doesn't. And really, it, it doesn't really matter if, it, like, yeah, it is. It is a fresher product. They are doing things different, but in the <laughs> end, it's, it's like, oh, why not just Bless Charlie. have both? Right. But it's it's that bottom line of WWE is just they're being more pricey on that one. I'm sure yeah. if they were around the same price that of AEW, they probably would have both shows on different nights. Yeah, and and the deal and the thing you got to realize is that Italy isn't the same as the United States, where they can just have wrestling on uh, five, six nights a week. Okay, I'm it, it, it the way oh. Italy. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm an expert on how Italy works. Okay, but there's every chance that they're only allowed one show of wrestling a week. Okay. And at this point in time, if if you're Italy and you have you have two hours of wrestling allotted a week, okay, what product are you gonna put on your TV right now? <laughs> Seeing everything, okay. Honestly, Not just, honestly, it just—it just feels like just an endless debate. It's just it's I, a, honestly, it's just I don't care what it is as long as it's wrestling. I'm happy about it. So, and, and, and I, I just don't see. I honestly just don't see this Italy. ending because it, it's, it's just we're talking. Yeah, I don't it's see a, it. I don't see it ending with this. Yeah, we're t- we're talking about Italy, okay. Right now, okay? It's one of those things we know? where... <laughs> Italy. Do you realize how many Italians are in Italy? A lot. No, no shit. But I mean, like, we don't, we, don't, we don't know how Italy TV works. We what? know how United States TV works, Italy. where you get wrestling every, every, every day, and it's like you, you get the cream of the crop. You don't get that everywhere else. You get, the, the TV networks have to pick and choose over there. So, God, and they just and can't Italy handle too. handle all that wrestling cream. Yeah, and and Italy chose AEW. You, I, I'm not gonna comment on wrestling cream. <laughs> yeah, you just let's, did. Let's so nobody I comment win. on that. Thank you. But uh, but it's being the smart one and not actually referencing saying the words. Yeah. No, thank but you. It. Every country has has probably a different allotment of time for wrestling and and a, a lot of countries don't have the same yeah, channel yeah. that we do don't have the same channels that the United States does the United States can put on wrestling on every channel whenever they want to but it's like it, it Italy chose AEW over WWE okay one country chose AEW over WWE yeah. whatever 
Mm-hmm. It's, it, I'm kind of, re- I kind of had reached that point with even the discussion. It's just like, oh, okay, they chose a different show, whatever. Yeah, it's wrestling. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, it's just a, it's yeah, just a shame I, that you don't enjoy they, more of that wrestling cream. Well, just the more I mothered that, all over their television set. <laughs> right, just enjoy wrestling. Stop picking shows. And then stop killing your product. And here's the problem. We could say that, and, th- and then you go on the dirt sheets, and you go on Twitter, and you go on Facebook, and nobody so, else actually fucking follows all that. past our time. Yeah, I think it's... <laughs> now, you're, now we're drifting into the eternal debate category, where obviously... <laughs> every... Drifting into that for years. <laughs> such is life, such is life. <laughs> Then again, whether we're talking Sammy Guevara and how to properly address these things or just which shows deserve to be where. In a perfect world, I agree with you, Fool. It would be great if we could, if ev- all the wrestling could be accessible to all fans all around the world. Would I love to see AAA in the States? Heck yes, I would. But realistically speaking, it's not always possible. But That being said, we just, I feel like we kicked things off just stumbling into some extremely divisive territory. So, in the spirit of that, let's. let's, Three rules. (laughs) Yes, segues. (laughs) Yeah. Because hearing how Brian started this show, I think it's going to be a quite divisive talk discussion, especially now considering what he knows between me and him. Hey, couldn't it, it could, really could not be any worse than or any more divisive than how we kicked off the show. But all that being said, yes, we we are coming off the heels of a pay-per-view. So let's get right into it. Let's cover the fallout from WWE Extreme Rules 2020 kicking things oh, no, off oh, on the Oh, it's the horror show. Oh. At Extreme Say Rules. it right. <laughs> <laughs> the horror show at Extreme Rules. Um, hey, man, they I'm add gonna... that to the official ti- card, so official title of the show. So, and it, it it truly was a horror show. Yeah, let's get right let's get right into the extreme creaminess already. We got Kevin Owens defeating Murphy. Yeah, what I liked about that. Anywhere. What I liked about that match is the fact that it was a, it was basically decided three hours before the show. At least that's what I've been. That's what I've read. It's like, oh yeah, hey, guess what? We need a we need a, uh, a pre-show match. You two, you two are good wrestlers, right? Go out there and put on a good match. And yeah, it's like, okay, let's put on a good match. And it just continues. And on. they did. And it just somewhat continues on with the whole, you know, Kevin Owens being on the side of Ray Ray, Murphy being on the side of. Uh, Seth, Seth, uh-huh. but yeah, it was it, it was a very entertaining match. Good, good opener. Good, as how we always put the pre-show match, a good appetizer to the what is meant is what's going to come on the show. That's going, a better way of saying things. Going off of what Scarlett Tarek said, um, I'm pretty sure that seventy-five. Percent to eighty percent of all pre-show matches are are scheduled about three hours before the show starts. <laughs> That's it. But at least but two also, days. What what I really liked about this was actually Kevin Owens going at the end is like you're better than this. You're better than being a lackey. <laughs> okay, That's mm-hmm. it. And then proceeding to destroy him at the end, <laughs> but that's it. But it's one of those the, the it's Kevin Owens and Murphy. Do, do you expect anything better? Do you expect anything less than a great match from these two? No matter what kind of time they're given, okay? That that moonsault that Kevin Owens does, holy shit! <laughs> that's it. Yeah, but it's, it's, I can fly. But but it's one of those as as soon as I see Kevin Owens versus Murphy, it's like it doesn't matter how long it is, okay? For the amount of time they're on the screen, I know I'm getting something good. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's like it's you already because 
Kevin Owens and Murphy have been so consistent. They're two of those guys where you almost you almost know intrinsically that it's going to be a good match. That almost makes it boring. That, do you guys know what I'm I'm talking about, or am I alone here? Yeah, it's like, I know it's going to be good, but it's like okay, I'm not really excited because I already know what's going down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> makes sense. Kinda, kinda. You're bored. Not necessarily bored. It's just like. It's, I wasn't surprised. Like, it's what I've come to expect out of Kevin Owens and Murphy at this point. It are wasn't you just talking shocking. about what they're capable in the ring or just the result? Yes, to both. Okay. Like, yeah, that, that's all I'm talking about. I, I, but, it, I know I'm yeah. going to get a great match. I know I'm going to get a great match. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I got what I expected. <laughs> that's it. The shameful thing in it all is he's not going to be more than a lackey. And that's sad. Because he's yeah. a great wrestler, but you know he's always going to be paired with somebody, you know? But, but I, I, I hope that it's kind of building. Like, we're getting a build here where, where uh, Seth Rollins keeps sending Murphy out to do his dirty work. And people keep telling him keep telling Murphy that you're better than this. What are you doing? And and then at some point Murphy's gonna turn. Like like that's the that's what I'm hoping the payoff is where we yeah, get a big like Murphy baby face kind of deal. I feel like at most from that you'll get like what a two out of three with uh Seth Rollins and then they'll pair him up with somebody new, you know? I don't unless feel unless Murphy to actually gets Murphy. unless Murphy actually gets to win that feud. Yeah. <laughs> or they could just have Murphy do what they did with Damian Sandow, patriarch, uh, and when he broke up with the Miz, went absolutely no. He's like no, he won. No. Uh, yeah, they broke as, up, and yeah, Miz won. As and long as Sandow, they don't Alex Sandow Riley disappeared Murphy. too. Okay, that's it. As long as they don't Alex Riley Murphy. <laughs> that's it. I think uh, we Alex Riley Murphy. <laughs> Hey, I think I know that guy. <laughs> but, Best theme song ever. <laughs> no. But moving on to the rest of the card at large, uh, I got to kick it over to Tarek for this one because yeah. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura won the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Tarek, how happy Fuck. were you? Let me, put, let me just repeat what I, I sent to you guys message-wise. There were enough pillows to cover my boner. On Cesaro getting that win. Okay, moving no. on. No, no, no. <laughs> there could never be enough pillows for a title win for Cesaro. <laughs> how long? It did just it shows no matter how who whoever they team Cesaro with, he will always make it amazing. And considering the fact that Cesaro, it's you can tell how great these guys work together, and how pretty much how much friends they are backstage. That. Yeah, it, they put on a they put on a great tables match, and there were a couple of spots where I'm just going, "Holy shit!" Like when uh, I think it was when Biggie like tackled Cesaro, and Cesaro just missed the table that was set up outside. It was just there were so there were so many tables that somebody could have just got somebody at some point uh, like at any random moment could just be put through it because there were tables everywhere. And, of course, they stack a table. Cesaro's just like, no, I am the table, and power bombs Kofi Kingston through two tables, and it was glorious, and I squealed like a little fangirl, and my boner just... I was, ran I was the Randy Marsh meme after that. Okay, kicking it over to someone who uh, will not talk about their boner. Uh, Brian, Charlie, any thoughts on this match? Please. I'm not sure about no boner talk. No, just kidding. But no, I. I <laughs> you said the B word, Charlie. What do you think? <laughs> Brian is disqualified for saying the B word, Charlie. It's your turn. No talking for Charlie. No, that's it. No, that's it. Brian, shut it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you, 
I never really hear tables matches being described as great or like looking into the quality of tables matches and for Tarek to come off. Well, we know, we know Tarek. But we have four, but we have four great wrestlers. I'm trying to avoid boner talk here, Tarek. <laughs> you said it. Here's the thing. We have four, we have four great wrestlers. One of them, a former WWE champion who are basically ex- doing their best at putting on an actual match. It wasn't just yeah. a tables match. It was a wrestling match that had tables all over the place. Yeah. That is, that's, and, the one thing that they, that's the one advantage that these guys had with this because they know how to put on great matches, especially yeah. with each other, because especially with Cesaro and the New Day because, hey, he had a great feud with them when he was a part of the bar. Bar, yeah. So, and, and I'll say this, okay, Quite possibly the best ending spot to a tables match oh, I've ever seen. Tarek Godwood happy ending. There you go. Ba- basically, <laughs> the, the, the best oh, ending. Oh, man. No, the best ending. Okay, have you ever seen a better ending to a tables match? No. Than no that I'm, that of, did it. Of the, I'm always going to love the accidental Cena Sheamus. Ending, because that just pissed off the world. <laughs> what are you talking about? It didn't piss off me. I loved it because oh, I was yeah. such, no, I was such a big shame. Like us loved it, but everyone online was bitching about it. So well, that, online bitches about everything. Yeah, this is true. But it's it that that's why I like this so much. It, yeah, you know these four can go. You've watched them for years. Okay, Tarek can keep talking about his boner. I'm gonna keep going over it. <laughs> but the, the his boner. But the deal he's thinking about it now. <laughs> but, the, but the but the deal here is okay. You know these four are great. What puts this tables match over the edge for me is it the, the ending was so good. And it looked like Kofi Kingston was dead underneath those tables. And nobody checked on him. It was great. <laughs> That's it. What are you talking about? The ref checked immediately after the spot. I mean, I, I mean, like, his teammate didn't, like, all the, it, and he's just laying there. Dead. Dead. You can't see his face. All you see is his dreadlocks <laughs> underneath the, I'm, I'm like, this is dead. This is good. That it's it's the best. It's it's the best ending to a tables match I've ever seen. Hmm. In my so yeah, this is great. Besides a Dudley's three D through a table, duh. No, yeah. I don't even. That was. I, I think that this is better than that. I will say it. I will say it, and I will stand it by is, it. Okay, I will say that because it, it wasn't in a tables match. There is no way it was better than Bubba Ray Dudley power bombing Mae Young through a table off the stage. Never, never. Can't. No table spot, Nothing match or not, will ever be able to top that. Nothing can compare to that. That and and then you just Bubba Ray Dudley just dropped fifteen feet on his ass, and you just get the dead stare <laughs> into the camera. <laughs> and it's just a... Finally, something we can all agree on. <laughs> and hopefully we've got more to come. Speaking of other things to come, we've got Bailey defeating Nikki Cross for a SmackDown Women's Championship. Fool, you got something? Should we just should we just add make the the two women's title matches one thing because they are technically connected? Should we no, talk about, it? about it. Second one, because there's nothing really to talk about. I guess it's continuing on what I on my uh, feeling of how I predicted this match last week. I haven't actually watched back our episode just to see my response to that. It was still it was quite funny. Um, just there's really not there really really much to talk about then. And there's not really much to talk about now. It's just I don't even think they had to have the the brat the boss Canucks used in oh, this one. Boss Canucks. This, this was exactly what we thought it was going to be. This is exactly... You knew that Tasha Banks was going to get involved. 
you knew that Bailey was going to win off of the Sasha Banks uh, distraction. And you knew she was going to win off of the, she wasn't going to win clean. That's not how Bailey works anymore. That's I got a scholar's is. quick talk for you, gentlemen. Yes. And with how, th- with how they're really presenting this, do you see them having Nikki Cross be the one that turns heel of the Bliss Cross team and essentially turning her back into crazy Nikki and essentially being the, unma- the oh. initial unmasked cane of the women's division? of being cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and just destroying everybody. I hope not, because Alexa Bliss, in my mind, works better as a bad guy, as a heel. So if they're going to turn anybody to that, I, 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 I don't think it's the right move at this point. Maybe later on, give it a year or so, but the move at this point isn't a turn Nikki Cross. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. I just feel like Alexa's already done everything you could possibly do as a heel. I just want to see basically like with the whole storyline of her, like trying to get that one moment and just, it keeps getting denied. It'll be that one point. It's like, try and be positive. Try and be positive. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not mad. I don't hate this. I partially am not happy with this. I hate this. I hate this so much. Oh, Alexa, Alexa Bliss, you're right next to me. I'm just going to slam your head on the ring so many times, and I'm just going to be crazy because I'm Nikki Cross, and I'm bringing back my crazy Nikki Cross character that I had at NXT that minus sanity. And, and crazy Nikki Cross is fine, but why does she need to be a bad guy to be crazy Nikki Cross? Because Why crazy, Jane, no, 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 no. Here's the answer to that. Why does she have to be a heel? Because funny, because uh, scary crazy is a much better character than funny crazy. Hmm. Brian, and all I see is your forehead. Vince McMahon doing it, right. a face crazy is going to be funny. Got it. Right. <laughs> Am I wrong about that? No. I had to think huh. about it for a second and remember which and remember which uh, person we're talking about here. But uh, Vince McMahon doesn't do scary, crazy faces. <laughs> that is, an, I'll, I'll, I'll will say this though: I'm not entirely sure where I stand on the subject, but you do bring up a fair, a pretty interesting point that you would say serious crazy is. Uh, yes, it, uh, serious crazy would, in, in by traditional wrestling logic, at least in my mind, be a more reliable way to go about this. But then again, funny crazy, there is a, a market for it in its own right, especially if we're talking about a project as a product that is still technically PG. So, which leads me into my response to your question. I'm not 100% convinced that Nikki Cross turning heel is going, at least right this second, is the best way to go. However, the reason I say that is because we don't know what's going to be happening with Sasha Banks and Bailey in the next month or so leading up to SummerSlam. It's a, there's a big show coming up. And with Bailey and Sasha Banks amassing all of the belts, uh, especially with since Asuka even technically defeating Sasha Banks, but then Sasha ran away with the belt. And now they basically have all the women's division's belts. With that kind of a setup, something's got to give eventually. And I just don't, depending on how that happens, it's going to be very difficult in my mind to determine what the best way to go about this really is. Oh, Does that I make any sense? That, yeah, I can tell you are setting that. up SummerSlam right now on the Raw side. <laughs> so what were you going to say, Charlie? You had your finger up. Yeah, no, I was going to say along the lines of Jeff. I think uh, right now, and then to piggyback off of what Jeff said, um, right now I think the main focus as far as turns on each other would, would have to go between Sasha and Bailey, and they're already doing the slow burn with that settling who the Raw Women's Champion is over next week, and then 
you know, it's just going to full on roller coaster ride from there with uh, Sasha and Bailey. So not only would it really be overlooked if there were to be a turn in uh, Chris uh, in, in Bliss Cross, uh, but the focus just wouldn't be there for any fans to like, they they just respond to it and then be like, all right, push that aside. What's on for Sasha and Bailey, you know? Yeah, it's mm. not the time for it. Yeah. Could be a good side match, Nikki Cross versus Alexa Bliss. Hmm. Oh, and It's Jeff, possible. Did you hear uh, during Extreme Rules last weekend, they said officially that um, SummerSlam was... Wait, I'm not sure if I saw it online or if or if it was during. Yeah, he got the email, buddy. But SummerSlam is relocated. You 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 have you, you have to bring that up. Yes. yes. See, look no, at that. He's already getting. Jeff is getting ready to cry because you had to remind him about this. You know what? Oh, and, uh, and I am all old. SummerSlam stuff has been canceled. Yeah, like the same within like 10 minutes, I got an email saying that, oh, yeah, we're just going to refund all of your all of your tickets. Oh, OK. At least there's so, that. Yeah. So that's they wasted no time in getting it out there. Like basically they're like they threw up their hands and they're just like, OK, we have no idea what the hell is going on. So here, just take your money back and leave us alone. <laughs> the good part is we all live in the tri-state, so. Within 2021 or whatever, you know we're getting at least like three events by us. So they're damn well better. I want to see some live wrestling. Win, win, win. I promised my wife I would take her to see some live wrestling, a uh, big stadium <laughs> show, and damn it, that's going to happen. You'll get to. Oh, I damn well better. That's why I'm less like strap a mask on my face. I don't care. Throw me <laughs> in the open mosh pit. I want to see some wrestling. <laughs> All right, I guess Ugh. we'll use that to segue into the Asuka uh, Sasha match. I They're already really brought it up. For... So we're mashing them up. Like... Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. There was nothing else really to say about Cross and Bailey. At least with, like, obviously this was the better match because, duh, it's Asuka and Sasha. You know they're going to put on a great match. And that's exactly what it was. And yeah, I've. I see just pretty much everyone being pissed off about the ending. The way I look at it, it's like it was reaching back at you. Uh, it, look at it, it's just like, okay, it was a show that basically both women can't really lose, even though they're kind of just, it, it was a last minute change, one of those last minute changes on the show. But and it's kind of ugh, shit now because now the more I'm thinking about it, the kind the way I looked at how the show was, it just makes it irrelevant because we're going to get a decisive winner on on this coming Raw. I mean, I'm going to smack that guess, face off guess, your at Ryan. the time at the time of when the show happened. I didn't I didn't really hate it because it's a good it was a good way to like both women looked amazing. And it was a good storyline aspect of having the ma- of ending the match. I mean, it like it was basically fun storytelling wise. The only real nitpick that I had with it is that when Stephanie came on and just says, "Okay, uh, Sasha, you technically didn't win, and Oscar, you did technically lose, so neither of you are the champion." Yet they still have. Sasha, they have Sasha Banks, like they're promoting her with the belt as if she is the champion. I feel like that should be, like that Raw should have been the point where it's like, ref, Steph would just go, referee, just take the Raw belt. You, here's the way, here's the way I'm looking at it because I'm Stephanie McMahon and I'm the creator of women's wrestling. So here's, here's how it's going to go down. See, Sasha, you cheated. So you technically didn't win. And Asuka, you still, you tech, you technically lost in a match in a situation where it's still no one wins. So neither of you are the champion. But Sasha, you can, you can go ahead and keep the title on the show because we got to at least have the belt on the show. And that's just, I already said it once, that's just blank stupid. I will that's, say, that, that though. That was mine to pick on it. 
I will say, though, that I felt like this is definitely one of the stronger wrestling matches on the card. The ending notwithstanding, I really felt like the women's matches were some of the strongest on the card, if not the strongest all around. Again, mm-hmm. the endings are going to be what they are this time of year. But as far as the in-ring execution, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Charlie, okay. you got something? It was an awesome match, and this, like many other things that happened that people aren't exactly proud of, uh, I, I, it boggles my mind. Because to me, at least, when I saw that finish, I was brought back to something that you would see in the Attitude Era as, as, a, as, as a quirky finish to a match. And everyone is always complaining about bring back attitude error stuff, and then stuff like this happens, and you hear nothing but, oh, that was lame. Like, I, I, I don't know if, if it just doesn't age well, the attitude error stuff, and mm. everyone keeps on blindly asking for it, not even knowing, what, clearly not even knowing whatever they're asking for. But I was brought back to, I could easily see this happening in an early 2000s pay per view title match. On like <laughs> Raw or one of the pay per views back then, and for what it was and for who they are right now, I thought it fit like a glove. Hmm. And here, here's the deal. Oh, here's the deal. Okay. The the match Good itself, the the match itself. Okay, across the board, I agree with you. The match itself, amazing. Okay, now Charlie, with your deal with the attitude era okay when when stuff like this happened in the attitude era okay it was taken care of like immediately like either the night it happened or the week after it was taken care of the next night on raw and then it's gonna be super settled on raw this week no no like the match that was made for next week would have been it, it would have been announced Stephanie instead of doing that bullshit that she did like 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 Tarek said okay Stephanie would have just been like okay everything that happened last night was bullshit we're gonna do it again that's it we're gonna do it again tonight there's gonna be whoever wins is the champion we'll do it that's live it. done Fuck we're it. doing it live Fuck it we're doing it live that's it. So that, it didn't serve your instant gratification, so it wasn't good? That, here, here's the problem that I have with this. It, it, it's, it's a symptom of the entire pay-per-view. Okay, for most of the main big matches. The, the content of the matches are great and then the endings come and it's like what the fuck (laughs) Hmm. so apparently apparently okay all I have to do is is put on a referee shirt and, and, and I'm a ref now (laughs) they already they did establish that that is wrong i'm going i'm 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 going the night of the pay-per-view i'm not going any further than that okay i'm not going i'm not going into the explanations on raw or any of that shit i'm going i'm i'm just reviewing it quick draw reaction extreme rules night Hmm. okay Anybody can be a referee now. Okay. Um, it, it did. The, the content of the match itself was amazing. Okay. I'll admit, I was a bit pissed off. At the, at the they end. did their job! <laughs> You're upset. The heels did their job. No, I wasn't <laughs> pissed off at the heels. I was pissed off at the E because... It's a pay per view, and and what we're gonna do? Oscar's gonna come out the champion anyway. We're setting up for Oscar versus Shayna at SummerSlam. 
Okay, so I actually don't I mind this. Think, I still think the better move here would have been Bailey to fuck up. Cause My... she, cause Sasha, the the deal, okay, and and because right now, right now, okay, how are we gonna get there? I don't know. We have like five more shows until SummerSlam, so they could do something. Yeah, you could have had seven. With another question. No, we seven would have been too much. At least with this one, it's a conclusion of the pay per view. It's a conclusion of the pay-per-view, and it'll just continue adding more to the, the build of, A, Sasha and Bailey, and oh. soon, the, once that story's, the story with Asuka is over, go right to Shayna. Hell, hmm. who knows how that's going to go? Uh, I'm, the, I'm mean the story for, I'm that we've been building with Sasha there's and not Bailey? An, there, there's not years. enough content to fill seven weeks. It'll just be some, some, some stuff, and then it'll just be Oh, yeah, we don't really have content this week. Here's a video package of it. Sorry, you can yell at me all you want. Didn't like it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And what did you say, okay. Carlos? Yeah. Tarek was that yelling over you. the most IWC thing you've ever said. And, and Tarek was yelling over you, Charlie. So what did you say? I said I'll answer your question with another question. When have they ever given a fuck about our creative process? You have a point. (laughs) (laughs) Hooray. Something we can agree on. So now that we can finally put a bullet point in that little debate, let's move on to Seth Rollins tearing out Mysterio's eye. Uh, Almost knocked over the lab. (laughs) this, this This was the greatest wrestling match all over again. This was a match that... No ma- it was a great wrestling match. It was just with the ending. It was just one another one of match that was doomed to fail. It, it was, no one's going to talk about no, other than us. No one's really going to talk about how actually how amazing their one on one match was. It's just because of that stupid stipulation that <laughs> it was, it's the stipulation that hurt that hurt the match greatly because once again. I watched the pay-per-view ye- uh, yesterday in preparations for this week's show. Again, it was an amazing one-on-one. If it was just a norm, if it was just a normal street fight that had the elements of the fact that you know Seth injured Ray's eye, that would that alone would have been just a great si- situation. Have it be where once again he presses the other eye. It raised other eye into the steel steps. Oh, my eye hurts. My eye hurts. And then just curb stomp one, two, three. The match is over. But no, we got to have, oh, no, my eye, my eye. Oh, no, my plastic red, obviously red painted eye is in my hand. And Seth is just going to go, oh, uh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants chowder? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, that's. That that's the deal. It's it's like you're watching this great one on one. You're watching the great one on one, and you're like, it, I'm I'm not even thinking about how great the match is. I'm just like, okay, when when are they gonna start trying to gouge out eyeballs? <laughs> that's it. When My are they thoughts exactly. Start I was to, waiting for that. And, and then they and and then at the end, it's like, it doesn't even. If happen. someone actually does it. Okay, like that's a great heel moment. Okay, heal it the fuck up. Okay, <laughs> act all happy that you did it. It's just like he's holding his eye and he's holding his his ping pong ball that's painted red. <laughs> and that's, he's holding the ping pong ball painted red and he's screaming. And and Seth Rollins should be on top of him, being like, "Yeah, I did that." Instead, that's Seth obviously- Rollins turns around and pukes everywhere. What the fuck kind of hill is that? <laughs> that every ounce of I I can't take Seth Rollins seriously as a I I could barely take him seriously before this, but now he pukes at the sight of an eyeball that he himself gouged out. Okay, that's it. 
I'm, I'm like, why should I believe that you're that? Why should I believe that you're awesome? Why should I believe that that is something that you heal out about? Okay, that is something that you lord over everybody else. I gouged out Rey Mysterio, quite possibly the most loved superstar. Oh. In the, other than other than Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> for casuals, the most loved WWE superstar that's possibly on the roster right now. Okay, you gouged out his eyeball. You gouged it out. Apparently, we all know you didn't. But for <laughs> and and in, instead of healing out and being like, I did that. What are you gonna do about it? Nothing can stop me now. Instead, you go over to a corner, you puke so that everybody could see it. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that. You made me do that. No, no, fuck off. <laughs> Charlie, you got something for us. So now on top of all of that with uh, us thinking that it killed uh, Seth as a heel or whatever... Um, Ray actually is in negotiation for a lengthy contract to support Dominic. And that's okay. this would have been the perfect time to write Ray off. Like for good. Like and that That's why a- they did it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and instead they say that he's in the hos- he's he's in the hospital and he's probably gonna be fine. It's like, yeah, yeah we know that. But it's like anything that any any goodwill as a heel that Seth Rollins just built up is gone now because he gouged out an eye, and and the eye is gonna be fine. (laughs) The eye is gonna be fine. It's it's that scene in Anastasia where Rasputin's eyeball falls out and he could just go, wow, and it's back in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I put an Anastasia reference in Scholars of Wrestling. What more? What what more can I do? What? Oh. Lots more, I'm sure. So, uh, so it's like the match, the match itself was great, but it was also worthless at the same time. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and speaking it, of worthless, and and yes, that does affect my enjoyment in the end. Yeah, speaking of worthless, uh, I'm curious about what you think of this next match. Drew McIntyre defeated Dolph Ziggler in a screw you, I'm a Dolph Ziggler match. I, I, let me just put this out there. What was this? Right. Let me <laughs> just put this out there. Do I have a singular bet? Let, you let heard, I put, heard what I said, and so did you. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me just put this out there first, okay? As much as I talk shit, okay, I do like Dolph Ziggler, okay? He's a selling machine. He's a great wrestler. Okay, but he's, he's, it does affect enjoyment of matches when you know every time he goes out there, he's going to lose. Doesn't matter what stipulation he puts it. First of all, he's dumb. It shows that he's completely dumb. Okay, because of all, this, of all the things he could have said. No Claymore kicks. You can't claim for me. <laughs> you, my favorite was the ones on Twitter that were like, Scottish men can't win. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but it's, it's, here's the deal. Okay. You stack the deck so far in your favor. It's an extreme rules match for me only, for Dolph Ziggler only. Okay, uh, Drew McIntyre can lose the title on uh, DQ and Countout, so, and and you still lose clean as a whistle on a kip up, <laughs> on a kip up Claymore. Okay, so the once again, once again, it's a, it's a pattern. For this show. The match, the content of the match, great. Awesome. Hmm. 
Okay. I really liked it. Like it, it, it was up there. It it ties for me for match of the night. Mm. But it's uh, the problem is okay. You knew who was going to win. You knew Dolph Ziggler didn't have a shot. And and yeah, the content of the match was great, but it makes Dolph Ziggler look fucking dumb. <laughs> Mm. So it's like, and and that's been the deal for the last five or six years, since since that intercontinental title run with with the Miz. In what was that, seventeen? I think. Oh, geez, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my 16, head. Sixteen no. or seventeen. Ever since then, the dude, even though he puts on great matches, he's been worthless. Mm. Oh boy! Well, so <laughs> all I've got to say about Dolph Ziggler is womp womp, heavy womp. Tarek's got and... something. To say. Tark, you got something? Just hearing you guys talk about it is just wow. Can you both, all of you, just be such little whiny bitches about it? Get out of this one! <laughs> oh my god! I'm just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Truth be told, I, I just, you know, it's, it's again, it's one of those matches where I've come to expect the result. I, which... expect, I expected the result, too. It, honest, at least the, it, the match did what it meant to do. It had all the stacks put up against Drew McIntyre, and yet he still overcame it. it. That was the real purpose of this match, and it just was the... It's reached that point where it's reaching the conclusion of the Ziggle Tire storyline, and it's a storyline that I actually have been really enjoying because of my, I, I really like Dolph Ziggler. I don't care if I know he's going to lose because I know he's still going to put on an amazing match afterwards, and it doesn't affect me as much as it affected you guys and it affected most people of the internet wrestling community. It's reached that point where it's, I'm reaching that point where I'm just going, yeah, he's going to lose. We know, but we know he's going to put on a give, good match anyway. So who gives a shit? So yeah, it, and just, and to be fair, I like don't want to know, imply. We all know, like a piece of a piece of cake is going to be delicious when while we're eating it, and once it's over, it's like, well, that yes, that was a delicious cake, and I thoroughly, I still enjoyed. I knew it was going to be gone eventually, but I still enjoyed it. Yes, and and to to be clear here, I'm not saying anything negative about. The match or Dolph Ziggler as a whole, because you're absolutely right. They they are present. They did present a good match. They probably always will for the rest of all their days. It's more of whenever these kinds of things happen, and Ziggler has sort of fallen into this groove of being a a guy who takes the fall for the major for pretty much anyone on the card, virtually. It's just a little bit of a bummer to me because Ziggler is so accomplished and he is so good that part of me is just sort of come to expect the, this in terms of an ending, but also acknowledging that Ziggler, excuse me, Ziggler ultimately deserves more. Uh, yeah. It, does that make sense? And, oh, and, I, I, yeah, I, it does make sense. And yeah, he does deserve more. I, hey, I would love to see him have at least one more big moment before he, because how old is he now in his late 30s? Uh, sounds like, about right, I think. Like yeah, he, he, he is getting up there. Right, so yeah. I just feel like he's been such a workhorse that he does deserve that one moment. At least he's still, at least I will give it, he's still getting these high profi- profile matches, even though we know what the result is going to be because. That's just how they've been booking him for all these years. And it just hmm. it's all just reached that point where let still like we know the mat it's gonna be a good feud and we know that it's gonna do its job. So just let them have it. Let them have their match, let them have their story, let them have the story that they want to tell in this. And yeah, it was in the end, it was a fun filler feud. And and I'll I'll also say this once again I did not disparage the content of the match, the match itself was great. But I'm gonna go back to a point that Jeff made earlier. Okay, when when you know that something's coming, 
no matter how great the content of the match is for me, I'm bored at the end because it's like the, the, Dolph Ziggler, he's going to lose. So it's like it, do, it doesn't matter at some point uh, for me how great the match can be. Okay, if I know, if I know in my head, if I know in my heart, if I know in my being that this person has no chance whatsoever, not even 1%, okay, it, it doesn't matter how great the content of the match is, I'm bored because I'm just waiting for the moment. I'm, I'm going to say that I'm going to say this as the most respectable way possible. I think that's very that's a very shallow way of thinking. And you I can just, think that all you want, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's why it's good for you. You know what? Keep go continue watching movies that you've already seen the result you've already watched, but yeah, you still find the enjoyment out of it. So it's an argument can be said that with he right here. We know what the results is going to be, but as long as the the journey to get there was fun, you got it's just very very mm -hmm. closed mind. Oh, it's like oh okay, I know the result. Doesn't matter what they do, I'm bored. That's well, that's just for, completely for me. I wasn't as into the whole single tire thing as you were, so I wasn't as into this feud as you were. So I wasn't really looking forward to this as much as you were. So bam, there you go. <laughs> well, la di da for you. Find find more things to be angry at. Uh, wow, this this whole night seems to be full of surprisingly divisive opinions. Uh, it's wow. <laughs> yeah, this this is another one of those things where there's so much nuance and so much other things that feed into both sides. And I have I heard both sides of this kind of argument plenty of times. And again, we, I don't think we've got the time to address it all in as much detail as it deserves right now. But I, I suspect that if we went back and we saw some of the, whether it's, I, I don't want to speculate, but there's, in my experience, there's a lot more nuance that goes into both of these respective opinions on, some, on a match like this. And even beyond that. It's it's definitely a, di a discussion that we I think we should have another day, but moving on and hopefully to our main event and hopefully this will be one more unifier before we put this episode to go. We've got supposedly Bray Wyatt winning the Swamp Fight over Braun Strowman via magical fiend powers. I saw some really. I mean, we want to talk about divisive opinions. I saw the most divisive opinions in wrestling this week surrounding this one match. You either loved it or you completely hated it, minus five stars, whatever. So, Fool, I know I got your, you said your opinion, and you seem to like this. Oh, I, I absolutely love this. I will say it, though, of all the cinematic content that WWE has produced, I think this one is kind of the weakest. Mm. I think the one thing that really gave it that is the fact that we had to wait to get a full, sol full, solid, clear winner of it. And this... I, I did really love this because it goes back to the Firefly Funhouse match where it was more of a character study for both Bray and Braun. And the only real the only real nitpicks that I really had with this is the fact that you got Pete someone dressing up as Harper and Rowan for Braun to beat up and just some random big dude to get set on fire. <laughs> for me, if I think that those things would I understood why they're doing that because right, the whole remember, the whole thing is just pretty much a trip so of course and pretty much visions basically bray wyatt mind effing braun Strowman. uh so of course they're gonna pull the history of harper and rowan but it's not harper and rowan it, it probably would have worked better with me 
if it was just random guys in sheep masks as followers of Br- of the cult leader Bray Wyatt. But I like the fact I there were so many different stages. Braun, uh, Braun looked in the beginning. Braun looking for Bray and seeing pretty much the live action versions of Huskis the Pig Boy, Rambling Rabbit, and Mercy the Buzzard, mm. and having a a physical form of uh, Abby the Witch or Sister Abigail, and even that Sister Abigail putting a vision of Alexa using Alexa Bliss's face to what's the word? Not torment, but to entice. Entice, entice. Thank you. To entice Braun to join in, and that's essentially what the story is of this: is just Bray, uh, Bray, uh, Bray wanting to bring Braun back as pretty much a continue as, as an extent, uh, uh, another an extension of the Bray Wyatt character, or maybe even more the Fiend of how you look at it. Mm. And in the end, the Fiend grabs Braun, throws him in the swamp. You see Bray even trying to get out, and he's dragged back down, which is an interesting way, thing to look at. It's like, so is Bray Wyatt, the Bray Wyatt cult leader trying to take control of the Bray Wyatt vessel? So, or the, or, and in the end, the Fiend once again takes over because it's the stronger entity. But I'll yeah, be honest. So many, so many more questions. That. Honestly, I saw this. I saw the ending where he drags, where he just, where Bray pops up and drags him down. I honestly just saw that as a reference to Friday the Thirteenth, oh, the first yeah. one where, where Jason. Spoiler alert for an old movie, <laughs> where Jason comes out of the lake and just out of nowhere after you think he's done, and he's just like rah, and then. Of course, after he come after in the later movies, he comes back with the mask, and you know, so, same as for Bray. It just that part was like, oh yeah, Braun kicks out. He uh, Braun is lifts himself up. He's trying to get out. He gets dragged under. You see Bray jump out, and it looks like he's saying he look. It looks like he's trying to get out himself, and then he's pulled. Looks like he's pulled under. So it's like, oh, it's the fiend taking over of. Braun and Bray. And it's just, in the end, it's the Fiend that keeps winning because the Fiend is awesome. And I will say, however, did anyone catch the Firefly... Fu- We're taping this on Friday, by the way, right after SmackDown. Did anyone see uh, tonight's Firefly Funhouse segment? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. Well, they actually, believe it or not, they actually do kind of address that. Uh, Firefly Funhouse Bray is, he has just the, the Bray Wyatt headlamp just sitting there, like, and he's just looking at it like, no, I'm not letting you out again. You had your chance. Now it's his turn. Bye. Mm, kisses the lamp. Bye. See you later. Bye. That's, that's great. Yeah, I love so, shit like that. It is just go look it up. I think you really stuff. like it. Yeah, and there, and I will say there was there was one like big criticism that even I that I even I saw, but that I'm also think I look at it in a different way, and that's when after Braun gets taken out by Black Sheep Braun, which is just a funny thing to see, because I'm like, yeah, that's that's just so cheesy and fun, and I love it, because uh, I just love cheesy fun horror stuff. And this was this was the most horror show of the horror show at Extreme Rules. Uh, I like like you have Braun sitting in the chair r- with chains wrapped around him, and you people are going, well, his arms aren't really tied down to the to the arms, so he can lift his arms up. Why can't he lift his arm? He he's able like to get his arms easily out of there. And then I'm just like, yeah, that's fair. They could have shown that more, shown that a little better. Mm, excuse me. And then I think I thought about it, and I just looked back at the Firefly Funhouse match. It was essentially the same thing with John Cena. You have him at the Saturday Night Main Event skit, and he's just pump, he's just pumping iron. You know, he could just simply put that down, but he's in Bray Wyatt's world. He's getting tormented by Bray, so he's pumping, he's pumping, 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 screaming in pain, and he barely like. He barely moves his arms. He can't move his arms because he's in Bray Wyatt's control. And I just look at it. That's probably 
what they were going for with that one. Mm-hmm. With why, why Braun can't just tuck his hands under the arms and just lift his arms up. Yeah, it's almost, like, it's almost like when you're in Bray Wyatt's world, your only chains are the ones that you bind yourself with. Exactly. And, and Either that or it's just very poor filmmaking and it's oversighted, but whatevs. I, w- I will, I, I did not go into this with the mindset of is this match good? Is this match bad? My entire mindset for this was going to be are you sports entertained? Are you not? sports entertained and and that's exactly what the mindset should have been for everybody going into this because this this was a fight this wasn't a match this was it was a segment it was a segment so so it was one it it was always are you sports entertained and and yes yes i was thoroughly sports entertained (laughs) that that, this if you like B, if you like B horror movies, okay, this is exactly up your alley. Okay, mm-hmm. if you don't, then you were never going to like this. <laughs> so it's it from the moment that Braun walked in, saw Bray sitting on the rocking chair. And then got done, and then wound up facing himself in the sheep mask. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is what we're in for. <laughs> and and it just got wackier and and zanier from there. And it was ex- it, it was exactly what I wanted. Did did I think that they were actually going to drown him <laughs> at the end? No, but. It 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 got the job done. It got it it got the story to where it needed to go so that we can get the fiend versus Strowman at SummerSlam. The fiend is out. The the fiend is out and about now. Okay. Strowman is drowned, but you know he'll be back. And Strowman will want his revenge. And Strowman will want to take on the fiend. And here we go. Okay, we're here now, and I was sports entertained in the process, and that's all I need. <laughs> Charlie, you got some thoughts on this match? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, like, the re- I didn't look into reviews or, or what online thought about it. I, Jeff, you said you saw a lot of bad from this match. Uh, you for a technical wrestling match in those reviews, or uh, what? What was no, that? It was a bunch of cornet flackies who don't like the shit. <laughs> no, actually, it was more like on my Twitter feed, I saw Tarek's reaction, and then right immediately after it, I saw Dave Meltzer's reaction. And he sort of yeah. panned it. Me- so it's like, there was, I didn't see much in between here. Meltzer and Alvarez have hated everything to do with Bray Wyatt since The Fiend started. Okay, since, since The Fiend came. And uh, his matches are like a minute long. He doesn't take any damage. And and that I I don't know what their deal is, but anything the fiend does, he hates. They hate. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I don't listen to them when it comes to the fiend because it's just they've yeah. yeah same as Brian said they've always hate they've always hated anything Bray Wyatt does because they like they want to be rest they want to be enjoying the wrestling not sports entertained. To touch back on the cinematic quality of it, for this to be considered like the worst of our cinematic matches, I will gladly take that because I was still entertained by this cinematic match. I, I think, aside from like you guys said, with like the guys who were supposed to resemble Harper and Rowan, like with that taken out of the match, I think it it was great for a cinematic match. The highlight for me was Sister Abigail putting on the Alexa Bliss face, trying oh, to, absolutely. trying to. Oh, yeah. I just thought that I'm like that is just it's once again that going into cool. Braun Strowman's history by himself, and now just throwing in the 
What did they? What did Braun and Alexa Bliss call themselves team as a tag big. team? A little big. Little big. Team it, little I'm big. just like, oh, I'm just like, I love the hell out of this. Just because it's, it's just <laughs> going back into characters, the characters' history, not just the yeah. wrestling aspect. And I just, I love details <laughs> like that. Even dissecting it, like scene by scene, like the inter- the whole interrogation thing, like. Aside from, like you said, from his forearms on, weren't chained down. I, uh, anyone would guess that Braun wouldn't have the chops, and like things would go south when it comes to Bra- Braun acting. But I thought that part was great. Mm-hmm. I, I, oh, I was it's a great dialogue between the two. Brian said. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that is, <laughs> in a nutshell, that's. Ex- the horror show at Extreme Rules as it was. Uh, far more dividing, divisive show than I, I personally was expecting. But now is the time where we turn it over to you, the wrestling viewing, listening, consuming audience. Uh, hair ratings, fool! <laughs> uh, is that facial hair ratings? Uh, I must be getting tired. I forgot about that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's perfectly fine. I'm Final beard ratings. What do you got? You know what, Jeff? Since you forgot it, you go first. Okay. Uh, in that case, I am going to give this a 3 out of 5. Uh, or a, a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, a very bushy uh, classic goatee. Oh. It was surprising in some ways I didn't expect, and and if this makes any sense, bland in some other ways I didn't expect. Like, again, high quality of the matches, but the players involved, I've just sort of come to expect the kind of high quality matches they, they deliver. So I'm hoping that this is going to be sort of set the stage for the bit, the next big show we've got. Obviously, we've got SummerSlam right around the corner. That's going to be setting a whole lot of new and exciting things in motion. So for now, it's just one of those t- shows for me that's it's good in the most predictable way possible for me. Three point five out of five. Fool, hey. what do you got? Oh me, okay. Um, well, I think. I I thoroughly enjoyed this show. It was there was great wrestling, great wrestling on all counts. Just there were some results that were questionable. I mean, like I said, the the eyeball story, the eyeball stipulation made was basically ruining Seth and Ray from the very beginning. Uh, the fact that. Uh, Sasha and and Bailey, Asuka, the whole thing like that. The execution I was perfectly fine with. It was just basically the the results continuing on that I had issues with, particularly the fact that Sasha is still being allowed to carry the belt even though she's not Raw Women's Champion. And something we didn't talk about is uh, since Apollo Crews I guess it, I don't remember if it's actually been confirmed, but it is reported that he does have COVID 19. So that's I, I why he was on. I don't know if he actually has it, but he, I, I believe he was in contact with someone who does, and, and he went into quarantine. And that's okay. why they. So I feel like at that point, they should have at least like. They had the segment where MVP is like, oh, because he's not here, it's by forfeit, I'm the United States champion. But the whole commentary is like, oh, no, Apollo Crews is still the United States champion. I felt like they should have just, okay, yeah, technically, Apollo Crews was not able to compete, but MVP was. He technically lost by forfeit, in which he's the new United States champion. There you go. Have that be it. Don't just have people them saying, oh, no, no, don't listen to what MVP says. Apollo Crews is still the champion, even though now he can't show up on shows. That's stupid. That, like I said, there, was, there, there is some things to nitpick. The wrestling was great. Um, I loved the hell out of the swamp fight. I was enjoyed wrestling-wise, and I was sports entertained. I, I, do, have my, I do have my complaints, which I went through. 
So with that, I'm just going to give it a four out of five, a full beard. All right. Brian, Charlie, what do you got for this one? Okay. Um, I'll go. It's, it's, I'm on the same wavelength, really, as Scholar Jeff. Uh, I agree with Scholar Tarek. The wrestling, I don't have a problem with. There was nothing here that I I didn't like wrestling wise. There was there was too much open endedness. Okay, going off of the MVP Apollo Cruz and going off of the Sasha Asuka. Okay, there was a lot of Seth Rollins. A lot of people looked bad in my eyes at the end of their stuff. Okay. And yeah, it's, I agree with Jeff. There was, it was very predictable. It, It was bland in some parts, but the wrestling was good. The wrestling was great. So offsets, uh, still a good show. I, I enjoyed it for what it was, but it uh, can't give it more than a classic goatee. <laughs> Charlie, take us home. What's your beard rating? <laughs> Not the only one being the bad guy here. Uh, I got to agree with Brian, three out of five. Um, I was entertained, but I just feel that like the things that were bad were real bad. So, got to bring it down two points. Three out of five. <laughs> Sorry, uh, very... He only laughs at me. What no, is? That? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not that a fact that I'm I'm laughing at the irony that we had such divisive conversations and we were only differed by one point. <laughs> no, the most divisive <laughs> that Torek and I got were about Dolph Ziggler. And we're never going to agree on Dolph Ziggler. So that's it. Oh, never. <laughs> other, other than that, okay, we basically had the same <laughs> idea. The same idea. We did, so it's like it, it shouldn't be that surprising. I never All roads said leads to Rome. Any, I never said that I hated anything. <laughs> it was just, I was just like, I Dolph Ziggler losing all the time. Score. Even, a lower, even a lower score, though. <sighs> Well, all that being going, said, I thought you were going to at least give it a two. That's how, that's how I thought you were going. No. It because was, unpro- it was it divisive, anything. not bad. But <laughs> yes. all that being said, now we can turn it over to the viewing audience, the listening audience, whatever you call yourself, the wrestling fans all across the world. Let us know what you think. What did you think of the show? What did you think of the of the Swamp Fight what was are you seeing as much division in your circle of fans as we are? Let whatever the answer is, let us know all across the internet, YouTube posts, Facebook posts, and if our personal favorite, the Twitter machines, starting with at scholars ow, follow us there for all the latest episode uploads. And you can also join us and follow us on our personal Twitter accounts and join the conversation directly. Fool, where can they reach you? You can reach me at the Avatar. Uh, and Brian, where can I reach you? You can find me not being creepy at Atomic Beanpole. <laughs> and Charlie, where can I reach you? Charlene. At Charlene. And you can find me at I'm Robbie Rage. Join the conversation. Follow us all. Join the conversation because you know who we are and who are what our eyes are. We are the scholars of wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Let me in. <laughs>